Welcome back, everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Tata Steel Rapid and Blitz Chess Tournament, which is happening in Kolkata, India. Now, there are many strong players competing competing in the event, including Wesley So, Noderbeck, Abdus Torb, but most importantly, the five-time world chess champion, Magnus Carlsen. Now, you might also be wondering why I'm not playing the event, so before we dive into the recap, I do want to give my explanation. First of all, I never received a formal offer to the tournament, but secondly, I have played this event in the past, and unfortunately, as it relates to this event and the location it's being held, I tried playing in 2022. It's a long way to travel from the U.S. to India, and I actually was jet-lagged for the entire event most days i was waking up about 30 minutes before the game trying to catch the bus um all in all it was a very difficult experience for me so i have not seriously considered playing since then now all that aside let's get to the action so we have magnus playing we have wesley playing we have a lot of the indian juniors playing but also in a recent interview with the hindu stand which i intend to cover on my channel down the road magnus carlson said that he expects one of these juniors to surpass him in the next couple of years in classical chess so with all these great indian juniors who are competing let's see if they can put up a great fight so in the first round, we have Magnus with the white piece playing as Pragnananta. Now, in recent times, Prag has fallen a little bit behind the other two. Obviously, you have Gukesh competing for the World Chess Championship, and you have Arjun Aragaisi, who very recently broke 2,800 and temporarily climbed to number two in the world. All right, so it is rapid chess. Players are playing with 25 minutes from the get-go. I believe it is a 10-second increment, so each move they gain 10 seconds, and Magnus has the white pieces. So the game starts out with the move C4. Prag plays the move Knight F6, and now we get Knight F3. Game continues with e6, we get g3, d5, and now we have bishop g2. Now what Magnus wants here is to go into one of these very classic and slow Catalan setups. He's playing the Fianchito here. If black plays bishop e7 after d4 here, we would have a very traditional Catalan. If, if white chooses to castle, we can also get something like b3 with bishop b2. At any rate, it gets exciting. Now Prag has other ideas here, and he decides to play d4. We get d3, and now we have the move bishop b4. We get bishop to d2, and a5 is played. Now, the reason that Prague has played d4 here is he's trying to go for a classic Ben-Oni setup where white has these pawns on e2, d3, and c4, and black potentially gets the pawns on c5 and d4 as well. We get castles, knight to c6, Magnus trades the bishops, and now he plays the move a3. Now, what Magnus wants to do is since Prague has played knight to c6, which is a little bit less traditional when putting a pawn on c5 and creating this pawn structure, is that we get this situation where if Magnus is able to get the knight on a3, reroute the knight to c2, now the pawn on e5 becomes a little bit weak, or not e5, sorry, d4, and white can go b4, b5, and suddenly there's all kinds of pressure in the center of the board. So after a3, Prague castles, Magnus plays knight bd2, we get pawn takes pawn, queen b3 and now we have the move rook a6 being played now you will notice already the computer is not a fan of this queen b3 move it wants magnus to simply take with the rook and after takes takes and e5 here now it wants queen a4 followed by rook to b1 and white is doing reasonably well maybe not even better just very slight edge i would say even though the computer says equal but instead we get the move rook a6 or queen b3 i should say rook a6 and now we have rook takes pawn Prague plays rook b6, we get queen to c2, and now we have the move queen e7 being played. Now for Prague, he's gotten pretty much the optimal setup. The knight is guarding the pawn. White can never harass the knight with b4 and b5 because you're really overprotecting the square. And now you can play for e5, opening up the diagonal, but e4 as well. So Magnus goes rook fa1, we get e5, and now we have the move rook a8. Magnus trying to make use of the double stack on the a file while black has a bit more control in the center of the board. Prag plays h6 here. Now, this move is a dual purpose move. First of all, it creates a classic look for the king, but also down the road, you might want to play a bishop f5 followed by something like something, some idea like e4. But there's always an idea like knight h4 to hit the bishop. Whereas if you have the pawn in h6, just to illustrate it, you can always drop the bishop back to h7. But secondly, there also are ideas where white can go knight g5, opening up the diagonal, and then intending to reroute the knight to e4. So after h6, Magnus plays the move knight to e1 here. We get g6, and now we have b3 being played. Now, Magnus is getting clearly outplayed here by Prague. Prague is simply a little bit better. Is it anything to write home about? No, it's a small advantage. But that being said, Magnus has no real advantage in this position. And it does speak to how strong these kids are becoming now, that even in rapid chess, their fundamental understanding is good enough against Magnus. So we got bishop g4. 
Magus plays h3 we got bishop to e6 and now we have the move queen c1 being played Magus is trying to maybe go queen a3 trade off into an end game as we know Magus loves the end games and it's worth mentioning that if white can get an end game like this for example white would potentially have a small edge due to the open diagonal and the long-term ideas like knight c2 so we get king g7 Magus plays knight c2 we get knight to d7 here another nice move from Prague trying to go knight c5 to hit the pawn on b3 here and now we get rook takes rook queen takes his plate and Magus goes f4 here now this is a move that to me it appears like Magus he's feeling a little bit of pressure here his position is very cramped black has more space in the center rook pressuring the pawn on b3 ideas like f5 and e4 coming and he wants to mess up the board so he plays f4 here now this move really messes up the pawn structure because now you're trying to pressure the pawns on e5 and d4 here and use the diagonal if black takes for example after takes here there's knight f3 there's queen b2 coming let's just say you got some position like this um just to illustrate the point and suddenly the d4 pawn will fall Prague, however finds the best move in the position which is knight before now the reason this is the best move in the position is that the problem for black here is that this knight on c2 it potentially attacks the pawn on d4 in the long run but it also supports a pawn thrust to b4 so when Prague goes knight before here now now if white takes on e5 just to illustrate the point after takes takes and c5 here let's just say knight f3 and queen b8 for example black will be able to regain the pawn to sacrifice but now his center central pawn on d4 is very well protected the pawn on b3 is weak e5 is weak and in the long run just to set this up the pawn on e2 also is a big problem for white as well so after knight before magnus trades the knights and now we get the move knight to f3 being played trying to pressure e5 and d4 via the f3 square now the computer really hates this it thinks that after knight to c5 which Prague plays black has a big advantage here it's 0.7 is Prague going to be able to beat Magnus once again just like he did in Miami two years ago well let's see so Magnus goes queen to a3 now we get queen takes queen takes and here we have takes takes and now we get knight takes b3 Magnus plays king to f2 we get king to f6 and at this point we're in an end game where black has one extra pawn on the queen side this b7 pawn but it's still tricky to play because you can't ever really move this knight away if you play a move like knight to c5 here you lose the extra pawn on d4 and if you play c5 here now the knight on b3 is kind of stuck you don't really have any squares available to move to and it's a lot there's a lot of play left in the game so after h4 Prague goes c6 we get to move rook to a8 rook to a6 and now we have rook b8 being played and here we get to move rook a2 now another great thing with these kids is that they are not afraid at all of the older generation this this is a situation where it'd be very easy to play rook b6 and simply make a draw by repetition but no Prague goes rook a2 trying to create the kebab on the second rank he wants to go knight c1 and gobble all of these pawns on the pawn chain so Magnus goes king to e1 we get rook to a7 king to f2 and unfortunately here Prague decides to make the draw by repetition by <clears throat> playing the move bishop to f by playing the move rook to a2 sorry my, my I got something stuck in my throat now Magnus here decides to play bishop to f1 instead of king to e1 I think the reason Magnus did not go king to e1 is he probably saw that after king to f5 rook takes b7 knight to c5 let's just say rook b8 and king takes f4 the black king is entering and white is in a lot of trouble so we get bishop f1 instead and here Prague plays rook a7 we get bishop g2 and now the game ends by repetition now it's funny because I said that it felt like the kids want to go for more in this case after bishop to f1 the reason that Prague did not play on is really quite simple Prague was getting very low on time here and this is a situation where if you make even one mistake everything could collapse now what I think Prague saw is he probably saw the best line knight to c1 and he saw that after takes takes here knight c5 he's up a pawn the pawns are guarded on the chain here but he was most likely worried about the, the possibility of king to e1 here and he didn't see a good continuation because after rook to a1 white just moves the king back and after king to f5 which is the best move here if white takes on d4 king takes f4 king d1 I suspect the moves that he missed here <clears throat> was this move king to e3 and after knight c2 there's king to f2 winning the bishop on f1 and black is actually winning the game now in a classical game I think Prague would find this almost for sure but in a in a rapid game turn to a blitz turn into a bullet game this is not easy to spot and and honestly if you miss even one move in the sequence you're very likely going to lose this game 
So a little bit disappointing from Prague's standpoint to draw from Magnus' standpoint. It's a bit of a bit of a sigh of relief. He gets the draw in a game where he was being outplayed pretty much from start to finish. And as I said at the start of this recap, it's showing just how strong these kids have become now that Magnus is struggling against them. This is a game where he was lucky to get the draw. And Magnus is, of course, the greatest player of all time, the five-time world champion. And he was on the wrong side of this. So, Magnus gets a draw in the first game. In the second game, Magnus would draw with the black pieces against Nihal Sarin, another very talented Indian junior, part of that second layer alongside Aravind, around 2,700, but not quite up there with Prag, Gukesh, and Arjun. So now we're going to take a look at the third game of the day. Magnus with two draws, not playing great chess here at the start, and he has the white piece against Vidit Santosh Gujarati, also from India. Now, Vita has struggled recently in the Chennai tournament. He lost a bunch of points. He's now down to, I think, 2730-ish. Somewhere around, I would say, number 16, 17 in the world. Still very strong, but he's having a bit of a rough patch. So the game starts out with E4 from Magnus. We get the move E5, knight to F3, and now we have the move knight C6 being played. Here, Magnus plays bishop to B5. We get knight to F6, and now we have castles being played. Now, at this point, we can tell that Vita is sticking to his preparation from the Canada's tournament. He's playing the classic Berlin defense against the Spanish. Uh, the system has been known for many, many years, really prominently used by Vladimir Kramnik when he beat Gary Kasparov in their world championship match. And even 20 plus years later, it remains a very, very solid defense. So we get castles. Knight takes e4, Magnus goes rook e1, knight d6, and now we get the move knight takes pawn. Now, usually, if you're trying to be very aggressive in the Berlin, after knight takes e4, most of the time you go into the classic endgame with d4, knight d6, takes, 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 knight f5, takes, takes, and now after h3, black has many moves. There's king e8 and h5, there's bishop d7 and king c8, many different setups for black, but this is considered to be the most testing after castles knight takes e4. But Magnus does play rook e1, knight d6 takes. We got to move bishop e7, not knight takes bishop, by the way, because then knight takes knight would be uh-oh, spaghetti time. The king is in check, and now you lose the queen. You block, I take the knight. You block, I take the queen. GG, why not? So we get to move bishop e7. Magnus plays bishop f1. We got to move knight takes, takes, castles, and now we have d4. Here we get bishop f6, rook e1, and rook e8. And now Magnus plays the move bishop f4. Now, all this is pretty standard theory. It's very well known. Um, it's considered to be most, most likely a draw with perfect play. But in rapid or blitz, there are chances for both sides to make some, some mistakes. So we get takes, takes. Here we have knight e8 being played. If black were to grab what looks like a free pawn on d4, white can trade the bishop for the knight. And after c3, bishop f6, and knight to a3 here, white has a small advantage because of these weak double pawns on the file. Probably the best move is to go d5, knight to b5. And now after something like um, d4 here, I think white white has some knight c7 line, which is very, very tricky. Also, black plays something like b6, just to illustrate the point. You can go knight to b5, bishop b7, takes, takes, and rook d1. And because of the structure with white having three connected pawns on the queen side here versus black having two and the slight central weakness, white can maybe claim a small advantage. Obje objectively, it should be a draw, but white has a slightly better position. So after queen takes e1, we get knight to e8. Magnus plays c3, we get d5, and now we have knight to duke being played. Vita plays bishop f5, we get queen e3, and now we have the move knight d6 h3 and we get to move h6 magnus goes rook e1 and now we get bishop to g5 now at this point in the game once again we're in the middle game and as you can tell from the evaluation bar magnus has absolutely no advantage whatsoever much like the prag game he is struggling out of the opening and I've always felt that Magnus's one weakness is potentially the openings. But in Rapid and Blitz, I felt like he's always able to get a bit more than he is in Classical. But to see this happening in multiple games now with the white pieces where he has no advantage, it does show how tough chess is becoming and how difficult opening theory is in terms of trying to get an advantage. So we get g4 here from Magnus. We now have takes, takes. We get to move bishop h7. And this is apparently a slight mistake. Now, what the computer wants is either bishop to g6 or bishop e6 here. Both moves are relatively fine. Another point I want to make is you're probably thinking, well, wait, white is playing g4. You're weakening the position of the white king. However, in this position, due to the lack of dark square b's here, basically a black and a dark square b, some of these squares would be weak or some knights on the king side. The king could be weakened a little bit. But here, because it's just a bishop and a knight, it doesn't really matter. And you're also taking more space on the king side for the end game. So we get bishop h7. And now Magnus correctly plays move c4. And this is a Magnus Supreme. Magnus has always shown a great understanding of the game where if there's a slight mistake in a, in a, a pretty fixed end game 
situation of pawn structure he will pounce and sure enough he does by playing the move c4 and now we get the move pawn takes pawn Magnus takes back and you're probably thinking well now white has an isolated pawn on d4 white may have that but because white controls the only fully open file this e file combined with a lack of development in here and a lot of weak pawns white has a bit of an advantage so here Vita trades the knights now he goes for bishop g6 trying to guard the pawn on f7 and Magnus plays rook e5 now the idea behind rook e5 is multi-purpose first of all you want to potentially line up the double stack on the e-file to infiltrate and create the kebab secondarily down the road you might want to play something like h4 and then h5 g5 and the rook will support pushing the p on this fifth rank so after rook to e5 Vita plays king f8 we now get to move queen to e3 with queen d6 being played and here Magnus goes h4 trying to expand on the king side Vita plays queen d7 we get the move queen to f4 here guarding the pawn on g4 and now we have the move rook e8 being played now again Magnus has no advantage Vita is defending this very very well so how will Magnus create chances to stay alive and try to win this rapid portion of the tournament well he goes h5 we get to move bishop to h7 and now we have bishop d5 c6 and bishop c4 back now this move is maybe not necessary pl playing bishop b5 but the point is that in the long run magnus is hoping that by putting this pawn on the c6 square it's the same color as the bishop and the pawn on d4 will stop the pawn from ever advancing so we get f6 and this is a start of going in the wrong direction now the computer here thinks that black should play b5 and after bishop b3 here now you can play this move f6 because the queen will guard the pawn on a7 if white ever tries to infiltrate additionally I'm a little surprised that Vita did not find this b5 line because there is a variation within this um within this uh within this um this Berlin defense where black does go c6 and b5 I think it goes um I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes I believe there's this one line I'm just trying to remember it right off because I did just wake up where you go rookie one 96 takes here bishop f1 I believe it's um what is the line how do you play c4 there's there's this line with castles um actually no sorry it's takes takes castles knight c3 98 95 bishop d6 rookie one and there's this line where at a critical moment you play c4 and it's something something like this just to set, set it up um and you get this sort of position with knight f6 takes takes bishop takes takes rookie five here bishop c4 bishop d7 rookie one and black actually usually plays this move b5 bishop b3 followed by a5 at some point in this situation and it's very similar because you get a pawn on d4 and a rook on e5 here but you are pushing the pawns on the queen side so getting back to the game is a little bit surprising here that Vita doesn't play b5 and a5 because there are a lot of similarities to that other variation but he goes f6 Magus trades the rooks and now he plays queen b king e7 and here we get the move bishop e2 now this is not losing by any means for black but the problem here is that white's position is a lot easier to play you're focusing on the pawns on b7 and a7 you have queen h8 the king goes to f7 you also have bishop c4 so there are a lot of issues here and black has to worry about all these different plans and try to be concrete whereas white simply will tunnel on one line based on black's move and when you combine that with the fact that Vita is down three plus minutes here it makes for a very unfortunate situation so we get the move bishop to e4 here this is a mistake here Vita should have played king f7 I understand why he didn't do this movie probably thought well queen takes pawn I'm just losing but of course because computers are ridiculously good at the game of chess black has this absurd move bishop to d3 sacrificing the bishop and if white takes now it's a draw by repetition you can simply do the yo-yo here and if you try to hide on the h file I just check you and add infinitum and whenever you go back I check so it's just a classic yo-yo to make the draw frankly in a classical game I think you can spot this in a blitz game very very tough to find this bishop d3 move um as it exists so we get bishop to e4 instead and now Magnus plays queen takes pawn and at this point Magnus is now simply up a pawn and bishop d3 no longer works here because you have to move queen to a3 checking the king and winning the bishop on d3 and now your bishop still guards the pawn on g4 so after queen a7 Vita plays move bishop to d5 Magnus goes a4 we get f5 and now we have queen b8 being played now at this point Magnus is on his road to a victory he has the extra pawn this extra d4 pawn he's pushing the pawns on the queen side the queen can go to e5 or h8 here so it's simply a matter of technique if Magnus displays his trademark technique he is going to go on to win the game so Vita takes the pawn on g4 we got queen to e5 king d8 and now we have the move king h2 being played this is an excellent move from Magnus because what he's doing here is he centralized the queen you have a classic sunray as the xqc would call it the queen is both a 
queen is both a wooden shield but it also covers all the directions um and it's centralized here so the black queen doesn't have good squares now you're going to bring the king to win the pawn on g4 and at this point this this is gg on the spot we get bishop f3 from Vita. magnus trades he goes king g3 here material temporarily even but with the weak pawn on f3 the queen hitting the pawn on g7 queen b8 also a threat there's just no way that Vita is going to survive so here he plays move king to c8 we get king to f4 being played another nice move by the way king f3 is probably okay but after king f3 queen to h3 now the black queen is loose and the queen tries to start checking the king all over the board so we get king to f4 important move now because if black plays queen to h3 here you can play queen to f5 trading the queens and after takes takes with the king going to g6 both the pawns on the king side fall and black will lose the game so after king to f4 we get king d8 Magnus takes the pawn here this is maybe not the only way to win but reasonably logical the computer actually wants b4 here just starting to expand on the queen side first but king f3 is played here we have queen to f7 Magnus goes king g3 and now we get to move queen b3 Magnus plays king g2 and here we get queen takes pawn on b2 and the move queen takes g7 now surprisingly here Vita is still in the game he even though he only has 13 seconds left on the clock this position is not completely lost if black were to play the move queen to e2 after queen e2 check king c7 or not king seven sorry king d7 because king c7 allows queen e5 there's check king d8 and the show goes on white probably long term a win after king g3 but it's still a game the other problem for vita is when you're low on time with seconds left queen upon end games are easily the most unpleasant end games to play because there always are a bunch of checks and in this situation with magnus having the extra pawn on d4 he's always going to try to force a queen trade and so it's very hard because you're basically trying to dodge the checks but you also have no in immediate moves and it's just a nightmare to play as i myself have experienced when i played a queen and pawn end game against magnus i believe in the champions chess tour in 2020. so we get queen d2 Magnus plays queen to e5 centralizing the queen stopping the check guarding the pawn here and also intending to check on the b8 square Vita plays king d7 we get to move a5 queen d1 and now we have the move f3 here we get queen c1 and now Magnus checks we get king e8 and here we have queen f6 being played now these moves that Magnus is playing here he's simply trying to keep the game going without making a committal decision because if he wants to make a committal decision he's gonna have to use 10 15 20 seconds and for Vita he's just gonna be looking for all the checks with the queen so you get queen f6 queen d2 king h3 and now we have the move king d7 being played and here Magnus goes queen g7 we get king c8 queen e5 king d7 and now we have the move f4 Vita plays queen d3 we get king to g4 queen to d1 and now Magnus correctly goes king to f5 sacrificing the pawn on h5 because he's moving the king forward and pushing this f pawn up the board now I'm sure that Magnus would tell you himself that he probably was a little bit unhappy with this technique probably felt he didn't need to give up this pawn on h5 but at the end of the day it is still a very effective plan so we get takes king f6 queen f3 and now Magnus plays queen to b8 a very nice move here the queen guards the pawn on f4 but now you can't guard this pawn on b7 I guess you can with queen b3 but after queen b3 here now you can simply play f5 followed by this a6 move you have to go f5 as well because if you go here there will be a check so this cuts it off so after queen b8 we get c5 here Magnus takes we get h5 and now we have the move queen d6 Vita plays king c8 only move of course because after king e8 we get the classic lolly checkmate with queen to e7 so we get king c8 now we have a6 being played by Magnus Vita takes and here we get the move queen takes pawn king c7 check king c8 and now we get the move c6 now one danger here in playing c6 is that you will notice if black would magically um sack the pawn here after queen g4 and takes this would be a stalemate the king has no squares available so the game would end in a draw but with the h pawn on the board all Magnus has to do is make sure that he doesn't accidentally take this pawn and and if you get something like um how do I do this? something like this for example this this is still winning because you have the h4 pawn push so after queen c3 Magnus goes king g6 we get queen h3 here trying to cover the d7 square and guard the pawn probably if I were playing here I would have played queen g3 hoping for the for king takes pawn but we get queen h3 instead Magnus now plays move queen to d7 check which ends the game immediately because after the trade takes and king h5 king e7 and king g6 king f8 king f6 Vita resigns here because Magnus will be able to promote this pawn to a queen black goes to g8 you go here here f5 king covers all the critical squares here and now you're just pushing your p up the board promoting to a queen and winning the game 
and if black goes to e8 same thing you go to g7 king supports this pawn going up the board once again and it's just quite simply a winning position so after queen to d so after king to e7 king g6 king f8 king f6 is played Vita resigns the game here and Magnus gets a much needed win in the third and final rapid game of the day so the reason I say much needed win is because Noderbeck Abdus Torab, another very talented junior from Uzbekistan he came out firing winning two out of his three games scoring two and a half points out of three he's currently leading the event uh, after the first day of the rapid chest so it's great to see Magnus winning and try to keep pace with these youngsters I guess we're going to be saying that more and more as time goes on um at any rate a much needed win for Magnus he gets on the scoreboard with the win he's now only half a point out of first place as day one finishes in the Tata Steel Rapid and Blitz tournament being held in Kolkata India so for Magnus not the greatest start but he's in the hunt and that's all you can really hope for at any rate I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap from the first day the first day of Rapid of the Tata Steel Chess Tata Steel Rapid and Blitz Chess Tournament being held in Kolkata, India. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button below. And we'll be doing another recap after Magnus plays day two of Rapid tomorrow and then the final day three, followed by a couple of Blitz days. But we're going to be coming up with a lot of Magnus recaps. So I hope you guys are, are ready for it. And um, let's see if Magnus can continue to dominate. Dominate. All right. So that's going to be it for right now, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, I'll see you guys all very, very soon for more recaps. And have a great rest of your day. See you. Bye.